say, neighbor, you're good to see you. All right, good to see you. I kind of get the wiggles out. Anybody you see it? That was a good saying, wasn't it? Amen. Good to have visitors today. Good to see these two strangers in the back row. Good to see Sister Terry and Jeannie. These are, how many of you remember that they were here last, how long ago was it? A month ago or so? Well, anyway, it's good to have them back. Uh, Sister Jeannie's husband is doing some work in Florida. And uh, they did a long trip down there and uh, helped him drive and had to take two cars. And, and they drove back uh, through Georgia. Uh, Sister Terry's dad is real sick. She got an opportunity to visit with him. Sherry, who was her sister, is homesick. She wanted to come real bad. Couldn't make it. But I want you guys to be with us this morning. Good to have you with us. And all of you, of course, good to have you this morning. I want to do an old song. Uh, sometimes I forget my words on it. But, uh, it talks about a, a, a Christ who loves us so much. And uh, you know, that is in love. He left the splendor of heaven Knowing his destiny
using some other scriptures. So, Judy Church, you may be dismissed. Dumpsters.
are good vessels, some folks are not. I want to turn your attention to Acts chapter 9, verse 15, if you would. Acts chapter 9, verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen, what? Vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. We studied in Sunday school this morning, and in chapter 13 we saw that he was going before the Jews and telling them the story of the Jewish history, and he's talking about how the Gentiles would be grafted in and Praise God, we Gentiles were grafted in. Because when the Jews rejected Christ as Messiah, we were grafted in. He had a special vessel job, if I can put it that way, for Paul. When he was sent to, of course his name was Saul, of course, but his name was changed to Paul. When he was sent to uh, the church there, they were afraid of him. Because he had orders from the magistrates to kill Christians or to imprison them. And they were kind of afraid of him. And, and Jesus said, don't be afraid because he is a chosen vessel. So when you vessel for the Lord, when you are an agent uh, who carries out good things for other people, you are actually having a special calling in your life. I talk about it all the time. Some people get saved and they think they can sit on there and do nothing. Hello. Isn't that true? They get saved, and they're satisfied that they're saved and going to heaven, and they come to church, and they sit there and do nothing, and let others do everything. And what I'm always trying to tell people, if you're the ones who are doing something, praise God you're being used. Amen? Amen. Praise God that someone picks up the slack. Someone is out there to, to meet the needs of folks who are suffering. We've got some folks outside these doors who are suffering. We have some folks outside these doors who don't know anything about eternal life. We've got some folks out there who think that this is it. That what they have here is it. Wouldn't you hate to think this is it? I hate to think that all I've got is this life. I enjoy this life. But I hate to think that I still have that pains and sufferings and jobs to go to that maybe you don't like and, and traffic out there to fight. I'm telling you, I got some traffic the other day. I thought, man, I wish God would call me home now. I feel like I'm on a road on the uh, speedway. And you can't get over, they won't let you over. If you put your blinker on, they speed up. They don't let you get around them. Is that true? The madhouse. Oh, it gets over there. I want you to turn to 1 Thessalonians, if you would, chapter 4. We're going to look at some vessels in here. And see if you are a vessel of service. I may not even spend any time on the vessel of dishonor. There are many vessels of dishonor. The vessel on in chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. And verse 4. Actually, go back to verse 3. Verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Every one of us can know how to possess his vessel in sanctification. Do you know what vessel is all about? It's being set apart. What does that little fancy word mean, sanctification? Sanctification means set apart. When you got saved, Christian, you were set apart to do a work for God. You were set apart to be a vessel. You were set apart that he might fill you with his power. And when you got saved, you received the Holy Spirit. But we need to pray for power. Amen? Power from God. Not power from yourself. Not, you know, I've been there where I, I, I did it for me or I did it on my own steam. I want God to use me. Yeah. I want to feel like God is behind me. That God is the encourager. That God is saying, go for it. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Stand up and be counted. Don't cower in the corner. You know, a lot of Christians are not vessels of honor today. They're cowering in a corner somewhere and they're going, woe is me, you know. What oh, a pitiful soul I am to have to live in this simple world. As long as God gives you life, 
As long as God gives you opportunities, you can be a vessel for His glory. Amen? And when you stand before God, you guess what you'll have? Multiple rewards. The Bible teaches me that even a cup of cold water in His name, just a cup of cold water in His name, He'll bless it. Look down at verse uh, 7 for me. For God has not called us to do uncleanness, but to holiness. He therefore that despises, despises not man, but God, who hath also given to us the Holy Spirit, that is touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are part of God to love one another. I think one of the failures of people today is not showing people that you love them. Can I tell the truth this morning? Amen. Y'all are quiet this morning. Y'all are quiet. But isn't it true? Isn't it true that a lot of people don't know how to love? I touched on that in my, in my lesson today on the radio. Talking about love. People say, well, I love the Lord, Pastor Martin. I do anything for the Lord. Really? I can't even get you to come to church. That's how much you love the Lord. I can't get you to, to do anything in the church. I'm not just talking about the Dillard Street Baptist Church. I'm talking about churches worldwide. People will not surrender to be a vessel to honor. People will not be there for other folks. You know, we need to be there. When someone is hurting, we need someone to be there for us. We need someone to hold up our hands. I remember a time in the Old Testament when Moses, he got, he got discouraged and some men got on each side of him and held up his hands. It's a good story in the Bible, in the Old Testament. And I can read in the New Testament where Paul encouraged other Christians to help other Christians. He encouraged this church to help this other church. You know, there's too much jealousy in church today. Too much jealousy. Wow, we, we get jealous because they have more than we do. That's not Christian, is it? That's not a Christian attitude. We've got five Baptist churches here within a mile. And, and I guess it's one reason it's hard to grow because they got such a selection. But uh, I'm not jealous of that other church. I want them to grow. We've got enough people in this, in this city, this county, and we should have this building full. we got people who used to come here if they come back, we have a full house. Amen? Amen. But they don't come back for, for, for different reasons. They don't like the preacher. They don't like the, 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 some people. They don't like this. They don't like that. Reminds me of the song he, we'll go to Reminds me of the song he, pre, he sings about excuses. Well, the preacher, he's too long-winded. Or he don't preach long enough. Or he's too short and he's too fat. Excuse me. <laughs> or, or, uh, the choir is too loud or too soft. Or they sing songs that are too fast or too slow. All kinds of excuses that they don't go back to church. Uh, what's the one about the preacher didn't shake my hand? You ever heard that one? He didn't shake my hand. A lot of times, you know why he didn't shake my hand? As soon as the amen was silent, you're out of the, out of the building. 